When it comes to collecting NFTs, MetaMask, which surpassed 10 million monthly users, is one of the most popular software wallets available. Created to allow users to interact with Ethereum blockchain, MetaMask Ease of Access and Browser Extension application makes it an easy appealing tool for both buyers and sellers. Whether you're transitioning away from an existing software wallet or you're interested in starting an NFT collection, this step-by-step -step guide will help you set up a new MetaMask wallet. So what are cryptocurrency wallets? Cryptocurrency wallets are a software used to communicate with blockchain networks to safely access and send and receive crypto funds or assets. Simply put, the software stores your crypto, just like traditional wallets store your cash and credit cards. Where things get interesting is the storage mechanisms. Unlike fiat money, aka USD, etc., which you store in a bank, crypto assets are stored on the blockchain. Just like you use a debit card to access your paper money at an ATM, you use your crypto wallet to access your crypto on the public ledger. The crypto wallet does not actually hold physical items, instead it holds a unique digital password or private keys, which allows you to interact on the blockchain. So let's jump into it. So the first thing you need to do is go to the MetaMask website where you'll find instructions on how to download the wallet as well as a list of browsers compatible with the MetaMask browser extension. Currently MetaMask can be used only with Chrome, Firefox, Brave, Microsoft Edge, or as an app via Apple or Android devices. Although you can just jump straight into setting up a MetaMask wallet from your phone, browsing and collecting NFTs can be a bit difficult via mobile considering many projects and interfaces aren't built for a handheld interface. Once you have the browser extension fully set up, you can then create an account that can be imported onto your Apple or Android app. Okay, so let's create your account. Once you've downloaded and installed the browser extension, for this tutorial, we're gonna be using Chrome, you'll arrive at the first selection screen. If this is your first time setting up a software wallet, you'll want to start with the create a wallet option. If you have an existing software wallet, like an Atomic or Exodus or Rainbow Wallet, and you're wanting to transfer it over to MetaMask, select Import Wallet. Once you've selected the option to create a new wallet, you'll be asked to agree to or opt out of MetaMask's usage data gathering. You can always opt out later in the MetaMask wallet settings. Next, you'll get a prompt to create a password. You'll use this password to sign into MetaMask's account via the browser extension on the mobile app. Although this is not your private key slash seed phrase, you'll want to save this in a safe place just as with any other password. The next step after selecting your password does involve your seed phrase or secret backup phrase. You will receive a randomly generated string of words and will be asked to confirm the phrase by entering it back into the app. Once confirmed, you'll arrive at the main page of your MetaMask wallet. The seed phrase is very important because Unlike working with a bank where there's a whole company and corporation behind it, so if you got locked out of your bank account, you could just call them and they would get you back in. You don't have that at all with your MetaMask wallet. It's up to you to keep track of your seed phrase. So if you lose it, you will get locked out of your account. And if it gets stolen, it gets stolen and you're probably gonna lose some Ethereum. So protect your seed phrase with your life. So here is two secure ways you should consider when storing your seed phrase. One, you could physically write it down in a notebook or on a notepad and save it somewhere safe and offline. Or use a passwords manager to encrypt your password and phrase. Saving your phrase anywhere on a computer, like a Word document, a text, or a file, etc., could leave you vulnerable to hacks and scams. And since the initial 2021 NFT boom, there have been numerous prominent NFT artists and collectors who have been scammed and hacked via their seed phrase. Basically, that means they lost a lot of money. So how to import an existing wallet into MetaMask? If you're importing an existing wallet, you've most likely navigated a software wallet interface before and have a general idea of how MetaMask will function. Upon selecting the import wallet option, you'll get a prompt to enter a private key, seed phrase, or upload a JSON file. Basically a snapshot of your existing wallet's info. Once you've imported your existing wallet, you, as with anyone new to MetaMask, should continue on to step three to ensure your MetaMask wallet is set up to your ideal preferences. So let's configure these settings. 
You should definitely take a moment to explore and configure your new wallet settings. This may seem like an arbitrary step to some, but familiarizing yourself with MetaMask settings and assorted menus can be a big help should you ever run into any trouble. Just going back to not having this whole bank backing you up, you should probably know what your MetaMask wallet is capable of doing and how to utilize it. To access the general settings page, click the account photo in the top right of the page next to where it says Ethereum mainnet. The field should set up your account name, notification settings, and contact list can be edited from the settings page. Note that your wallet's unique Ethereum address is listed directly below the account one identifier. An Ethereum address is a random string of characters akin to a bank account number. You'll use this address to interact with the Ethereum blockchain sometimes inputting it into sites and exchanges to collect, send, and receive tokens. Every Ethereum address is public, more or less depending on how it's used, and searchable via etherscan.io. Just because you can see or copy someone's address does not mean you have control over it. While anyone can send a token to an Ethereum address, only the user who owns the wallet associated with the address, i.e. has the password and the seed phrase, can manage and utilize the tokens within it. Once you've looked through your MetaMask settings and verified that the wallet is in the correct language and displaying your preferred currency conversions, you can move on to using your wallet to interact with tokens. So let's go ahead and add some funds to your wallet. The two most common ways to add a token to your MetaMask wallet are by either sending it from an exchange, Coinbase or Gemini, or purchasing Ethereum directly through Wire, MetaMask's default payment interface. Before purchasing or receiving a token in your wallet, be sure to click the Add Token button at the bottom of your main wallet page. Although Ethereum is a default token, as MetaMask is an Ethereum wallet, here you can search for a variety of commonly traded tokens. Once you've added your desired token, it will be easier to import. The coin symbol shorthand identifier is ETH, which equals Ethereum, BTC equals Bitcoin, etc. That will appear under assets on the main wallet page just below Ethereum. Receiving tokens from an exchange if you're already an experienced crypto trader, importing from an exchange will be the most direct option for you to transfer tokens into MetaMask. Copy your MetaMask wallet, that long string of numbers below account one, before heading over to your preferred exchange and plug in that address into the send feature. Similarly, if you're receiving Ethereum or another token from a different wallet, be it your own or someone else's, you'll need to import your Ethereum address into the transaction details on the sender's wallet. Another way to obtain tokens is to purchase Ethereum via wire. Purchasing Ethereum via wire on MetaMask will allow you to directly receive the funds into your wallet to keep, trade, or swap for a different token. This feature can be accessed by simply clicking buy on the main MetaMask wallet page. Once you're on the wire purchasing interface, there'll be a prompt to enter the amount, the billing details, to purchase Ethereum through wire. You'll need to use a debit card because credit cards are not accepted. Note that wire's exchange rate may vary from the other exchanges and that the company charges a fee to use its services. So let's move over to mobile. To use your new wallet on your phone, you'll need to download the MetaMask app through Apple's App Store or the Google Play Store. Once downloaded, open up the app, which will guide you through a set of prompts similar to when you first set up your wallet. Okay, so now you have your MetaMask wallet and you have some Ethereum in your wallet. Let's go ahead and purchase some NFTs. This time you'll want to choose the import using seed phrase option and input the private key you previously saved during your initial MetaMask setup. You'll then be ready to use your MetaMask wallet on the go. Once you've set up and explored and populated your wallet with tokens, you can connect one of the many NFT marketplaces and buy, sell, and trade NFTs. The first marketplace you'll want to set up an account on is OpenSea. OpenSea is one of the largest peer-to-peer -peer NFT marketplaces out there and it allows users to interact and trade NFTs from numerous different marketplaces and blockchains. It's kind of like a central hub. Once you've collected some NFTs, they'll then live inside your wallet and can be found via your OpenSea page or other marketplace accounts or under the NFT tab on the MetaMask mobile app. You can learn more about how OpenSea works and how to set up an account on the platform via the support page. Make sure that you're signed into your MetaMask before navigating OpenSea, Rarible, 
Zora, and any other NFT marketplace. Similarly, when prompted to connect your wallet to a website, be it a marketplace or a project hub, be sure that the site is credible and that the transaction you receive in your wallet was sent by the site you're currently on and not a third party. So bring this full circle, we're actually gonna walk through the process of how to purchase your first NFT. Let's jump into it. So let's go ahead and fund our MetaMask wallet through Coinbase. So after you download and install MetaMask, there's gonna be this little fox icon up here in the corner and you can copy your wallet address right here. There's gonna be two options here where you can send or receive and you want to send it to your wallet and then you plug in your wallet address under the two. And also you should cross-reference the last four digits on your wallet address just to make sure you're sending it to yourself. So we're gonna go ahead and send 0.1 Ethereum to our MetaMask wallet. Click continue and then click send now. Now over here on OpenSea, where we are gonna purchase a crypto skull. So you can check your Ethereum wallet to make sure you actually received the 0.1 Ethereum or however much money you're gonna send to yourself. This may take a couple minutes. Uh, so we're gonna purchase one of these crypto skulls. I like this purple one here. So we're gonna go ahead and purchase it. So we're gonna click buy now. We are going to agree, confirm, check out. Then it's gonna pop up your MetaMask wallet. There is gonna be your gas fees here. The total amount's gonna be $220 or 0 0.05 Ethereum. Then you click confirm. The purchase is processing, processing. This can take a few minutes. And you can view the transaction right through here on Etherscan as it's happening. Now that the transaction is a success, you can go into your MetaMask wallet or your profile, which is right here in the top right-hand corner and see your purchases. Yes, yeah, so you can scroll down and see the transaction log, anyone who's ever owned this and top sales. Here is our transaction. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. If you learned something about MetaMask or setting up your wallet, click the subscribe button because we're going to have a lot more educational content on this channel. And if you want to dive deeper into NFTs, we do have a weekly podcast, so make sure to check that out. And if you prefer to read, we have a weekly newsletter that's on nftnow.com. All right, we'll see you in the next video.